It's Sunday, so it's time for story time. And man, do I have some cool guests for you today. Uh, this is a type of animal I've never featured here on the show before, but it's actually a really, really cool one that we regularly carry here at Proust. It's also something that you found in your house, in your yard, under logs, in the woods, you name it. And what we have today for you are isopods. Now, some of you call them roly polies, some of you probably call them pill bugs, some of you even call them potato bugs. But the interesting thing is they're not bugs at all. They're actually a crustacean. Their closest living relatives live in the ocean. So there are all kinds of different species of isopods. These ones, for example, are called orange koi. And they get that, color, that way because of their color. They have this really, really cool orange tint to them. And sometimes they'll have like orange and white stripes and things on them as well. Uh, these are a European species. So we won't find this color in the United States, uh, but you can find them in the pet trade. Now, if you look really closely, you'll see that there's not only a few adults on there, but there's also a few babies. Now, the really cool thing about isopods and the reason we like them in the pet industry so much is that they're a great, uh, they are a great clean up crew. Sorry. Sometimes I have trouble speaking. A cleanup crew. So if you have dart frogs, you'll know that's good to have what's called a cleanup crew in there. And that cleanup crew helps break down waste. So as plants die, as food items die, as animals go to the bathroom, you need something that's gonna help break down all that waste. And in that case, you're gonna use cleanup crew. So that can uh, also include things like uh, springtails, but mainly, we focus on isopods. So like this one, for example, is called a canyon isopod, or more appropriately, a giant canyon isopod. This is another European species, but this is one of the bigger ones because they can get up to an inch long. Now, they can't hurt you at all. Isopods can't bite. Uh, their mouths are way too small to do anything. And majority of them are what we call detritivores. That means that they're gonna be eating dead or decaying matter. So every once in a while, they may eat like an exoskeleton of an invertebrate that's shedding. Oops. Uh, but for the most part, they're eating waste. They're eating dead leaf litter, uh, rotting logs, vegetable matter, and things like that. Um, so they're really important. Uh, often, uh, we really suggest that you have at least one culture of isopods in with your dart frogs, or even if you're trying to do any type of bioactive setting for your animal, it's good to have these guys in. Now this other one is called Sevilla, and these are a species that's native to Spain. These ones are even bigger, and I think they're much more bold looking. If I can get them just to stay on my finger. How will I do this? I have a whole culture of them in there. And you can see how big and bold they are. These ones are a really cool one as well. And because of their size, they might be more prone to attack a, an invertebrate that's molting. So if you're ever trying to do bioactive with something like a tarantula or scorpion, you need to be careful because some of them might actually try to attack your invertebrate. So the next time you're flipping over logs in the woods or you go into a moist basement and you see isopods in there, know that they can't hurt you, they're not gonna harm anything, and that they're literally the cleanup crew. So again, they're gonna be eating waste and dead and decaying matter. So on that note, I'm reading a book called I Eat Poop, A Dung Beetle Story by Mark Pett. I don't have dung beetles here in the store, but I figured isopods are one of the next closest things. So here we go with I Eat Poop, and it gives us an index of the different characters. So if you pick this up at your local library, you can go ahead and see all the cool different characters like uh, Seth Silverfish or Buffy Bumblebee, uh, Alphonse Aphid, Earl Earthworm, Molly Mosquito. There's lots of really cool ones in here. So without further ado, I eat poop. Tuesday began like most days. I sat down for breakfast with my parents. As usual, my baby brother was making a mess. I helped my mom make my favorite lunch, a poop sandwich with the crust cut off, and I packed up my backpack for school. At school, as I do every day, I hid my lunch under the big pebble behind the monkey bars where no one could see it.
It's hard being the only dung beetle in the entire school. I can't eat lunch with the other kids. I have to sneak snacks at recess and I have to tell everyone I'm just a regular old ground beetle. It's a lot of work keeping my secret, but I just don't have a choice. Look at how they treat Sammy Stinkbug. If everyone found out I eat poop, I'd be an outcast. Dad says I come from a long line of proud dung beetles. He says we help process waste and make the earth more inhabitable. All I know is I go through more mouthwash than any kid should. Don't get me wrong, I love poop. As dad says, it's in my genes. But I wish I were a wasp, or better yet, a dragonfly. They are by far the most popular bugs in school. That's why, the, that's why what happened in Mr. Longleg's class was so crazy. One of the popular bugs dropped a stack of books to surprise Ronald Roly-Poly. And Roly-Poly is an isopod. Ronald snapped into a ball. He rolled down the aisle right toward me. Without thinking, I jumped on top. I started steering him with my legs and carefully brought him to a stop. As I hopped down, the whole class cheered. You should sit with us at lunch, said Wesley Wasp. I couldn't believe it. For the first time in my life, I was going to sit with the popular bugs. When I got to the lunchroom, I didn't even care that I couldn't eat in front of the other bugs. I walked past Herman Housefly. As usual, he was sitting alone. Herman is the only one in school who knows my secret. We used to play together and we loved the same snacks. For a while, we were best friends. As I passed him, Herman said, <coughs> Hey Dougie, want to join me? I've got a poop sickle with your name on it. Herman, how can you eat that in front of the other bugs, I asked. They'll torture you for it. Herman chuckled. If I let those pests run my life, I'd be miserable. I joined the popular bugs at their table and I pretended I wasn't hungry. By afternoon recess, my admin was really growling. I snuck away to find my lunch sack under the big pebble behind the monkey bars. As I opened the sack, I heard a voice. What's that? It was Knickknack the peskiest bug in school. Er, uh, I don't know, I lied. I just found it under this pebble. The popular bugs gathered around. Open it, said Derek Dragonfly. Yeah, let's see what's in it, said Wesley Wasp. My antenna went numb as I pulled out my lunch, item by item. Ew, gross, said Nick. It's a poop sandwich. And poop pudding, said Derek. And a box of poop juice, added Wesley. This is disgusting, said Nick. Who do you think it belongs to? Probably that housefly, said Wesley. He's the only one in school who eats poop. There he is, said Derek. You should go dump it on his head, said Wesley. Bugs from across the playground started swarming around us. As they urged me on, I crept up behind Herman. I felt a pounding in my thorax. I was about to humiliate my old friend. I stopped and turned around. I can't, I said. It's my lunch. The crowd gasped. Yours, said Wesley? You like poop? I do, I admitted. I love it. It's the first thing I want to eat in the morning and the last thing I want to eat at night. It's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Then I did something I never thought I'd do. I took a bite of my sandwich in front of everyone. Look at him, shrieked Nick. He loves it. That's so gross, said Derek, but I was shocked by what happened next. A second grader praying mantis spoke up. So, my mom ate my dad. Everyone looked at each other. I have ears in my armpit, said Manuel Moth. I eat dead people, said Maud Maggot. I eat dirt. I have my own brain. 
I drink blood. My brother ate your brother. I'm a boy and a girl. That's okay, I ate your sister. My mom eats her own eggs sometimes. I cloned myself. I have no idea what I'm going to be when I grow up. I throw up when people touch me, said Gareth Grasshopper. I was born pregnant, said Alphonse Aphid. I breathe through my butt, said Tammy Tick. It turned out the whole school was crawling with weirdos. Even the popular bugs turned out to be weird. I guess I live in a house made of spit wads. I have five eyeballs. I breathe through my tummy. I like taste food with my feet. The next morning I went to school carrying my Captain Dung Beetle lunchbox. And I've eaten in the lunchroom with my friends ever since. So this story is awesome. Uh, this is an awesome and hilarious story about being who you are and not worrying about what other people think. And if you've watched my videos before, cause I have a lot of new subscribers out there, you'll know that I always advocate for just being yourself. It doesn't matter what people say about you. As long as what you're doing doesn't hurt other people, then you just be you. Be kind, be nice, treat people the way you want to be treated. Or in this regard, treat other insects the way you want to be treated. So just know that no matter how weird you think you are, everybody's weird. We all have our weird quirks and that is like 100% okay. And I fully advocate for that. So I hope you guys learned a lot about our isopod friends and how they clean up, including eating poop, just like our friends here. So I hope you enjoyed the story and I'll see you next week.